Hi everyone, I'm Zara. I'm a PhD student at CDS, um, uh, but also I'm like a guest researcher at CCM here, and I work with Aero. Okay, and today I'm going to talk about um, uh, a topic that has become famous as diffusion models. Uh, so let's just start um, by image priors. Uh, image priors play a, a very important role in uh, different tasks in image processing and some tasks in computer vision. So what do I mean by a image prior? Um, I mean a probability distribution that assigns non-zero high values to uh, good images, natural clean images, and zero or very low values to distorted and degraded images in the space, in the high dimensional space of all images. So if we have access to a, an, this kind of probability distribution, then we can sample from it. Um, but a more real life example is to solve inverse problems using this um, probability distribution. So what do I mean by solving inverse problems? In images, I mean that I have a partial measurement of an image and I want to restore or recover uh, a good image. Um, such that I'm consistent with this constraint. So I'm here, here I'm showing five different examples of um, five inverse problems, um, and all of them are linear, meaning that the forward procedure, the measurement procedure is linear. Uh, it comes, the partial measurement comes from a low rank uh, matrix. Uh, so the first case is um, random masking, where 90% uh, of the pixels in the image are missing. Uh, the second one is super resolution where uh, we have a low resolution image and the goal is to increase the resolution. Then we have deblurring where we are missing the high frequencies. We have compressive sensing when we have um, a few random projections uh, of the image. And finally we have in painting where there is a hole in the image and we want to recover. Okay, so these are um, um, ill posed problems. Uh, so uh, one approach to solving the problem is a statistical approach, uh, meaning that we want to, if we have access to a probability distribution, we can retrieve high probability, uh, high probability images which are consistent with the partial measurement. Um, so the problem is that uh, it's not so easy to construct such probability distribution in high dimensions and images are high dimensional entities. Uh, here is a very simple example. Uh, if you have like a one bit image, so it's like uh, black and white, then, um, and also it's like a tiny patch of an image, 10 by 10, then if you want to uh, estimate the probability distribution of all the states, uh, you're you are gonna have to uh, fill up a histogram with two to the power of 100 bins. Uh, so it's impossible to uh, do the density estimation uh, in a brute force way, which is called care self dimensionality. So traditionally, uh, people relied on a structural assumption uh, and parametric forms of this distribu these distributions in the image and signal processing uh, literature. Uh, many decades ago, uh, we assumed that uh, images are Gaussian in the Fourier domain, and then uh, wavelet sparse model, um, models uh, d w were developed and then adaptive sparse models and joint sparse models. Um, so uh, assuming more complex um, uh, parametric forms resulted in better gra gradual and steady um, um, uh, increase in performance when we use these uh, models. But as you can guess, uh, the performance was not that great because these um, forms are too simplistic to capture the entire complexity of images. So now we are in this era of deep neural network and networks and everything has changed, um, including the density estimation. Uh, it seems like now we have ways to estimate densities in high dimensions in a more data-driven way. Uh, there has been examples uh, of these attempts, GANs, VAEs, but here I'm going to focus on diffusion models or score-based models. Um, and particularly, all the examples that I'm gonna show you are coming from a, a method that we developed in 2020, which is very similar to diffusion. It's the same idea, um, um, which is basically the idea behind all of these 
variations of diffusion is that denoising is a good tool to learn priors of images. Okay, so now why is that denoising is such a good tool for learning priors? The reason is that the relationship between a denoising mapping and a prior is explicit. So first, let me uh, tell you what do I mean by denoising. Um, I have a clean image X and uh, there is some Gaussian noise with a standard deviation uh, added to it. Uh, so we have a measurement which is noisy with Gaussian noise. And the goal is to remove the noise uh, from this image and estimate an optimal X. Right? Uh, from a Bayesian approach, um, if the noise is Gaussian, uh, the best estimate is the conditional mean on the predictive distribution. Um, so um, this is an integral, um, as you can see, and there is a very simple derivation um, that turns this integral to a gradient uh, equation, um, which is kind of great because we don't like integrals usually, we prefer to work with gradients. Um, and the derivation here is very uh, simple, it's only a few lines. Um, um, and basically what this, and it was derived by Miyasawa, it's also famous as a Tweedy equation. So what this tells us is that if uh, you have a measurement, a noisy measurement Y, uh, and you want to get an estimate of X, the best estimate, the optimal estimate, is to take one step uh, in, the, uh, in the direction of greatest ascent and the observ observation uh, density, and then modify the step size with the variance of the noise that we added on the image. Okay, so to build some intuition, here is a toy example. We are in 2D space. Uh, so let's say we have uh, two-dimensional images. Um, and we're going to assume that all of good images are concentrated on this green curve. So they're all on this one-dimensional manifold. So um, any image on this one-dimensional manifold has a higher probability and everything else is zero probability. And we, so we call this P of X. Now, um, if we add noise to samples from this green curve, um, they're gonna fall off the manifold and that is equivalent to convolving the distribution PX with a Gaussian distribution with sigma, where the standard deviation is sigma. Um, uh, so I'm showing that distribution, P of Y, with the shaded area and the gray area. Um, each one of these half lines shows us um, the Miyasawa solution. So we start from, we start from a noisy uh, observation, and the Miyasawa solution um, pushes the noisy observation back to the manifold. So the, the solution is almost on the manifold. Now, if we increase the noise, meaning that if we, um, basically the Gaussian distribution, the Gaussian kernel uh, becomes wider, uh, then uh, the PY becomes a more diffused or a more blurred version of PX. Um, and as you can see, the Miyasawa solution now, it is still a one-step solution. Uh, it pushes the noisy observation towards the manifold, but it doesn't, uh, come back exactly on the manifold. We only get closer to it. Okay, so um, now, um, right, so now we want to um, use this idea um, and basically um, perform an anti-diffusion, start from very large noisy, observa noisy observations with very large noise and um, go back onto the manifold. So, like um, I said in the beginning, the, uh, the classic approach to uh, solving inverse problems is that we assume a P, PX, uh, or a blurred version of that PY, and then we um, basically estimate a good um, optimal solutions using that. Um, but now we are gonna flip the problem around and start with a good mapping and then uh, get access to the 
observation density. And the reason that we're doing that is because we are now in the era of deep neural, ne deep neural networks. Now we have really powerful tools to solve nonlinear regression problems in a supervised way. So we have really good tools to estimate x hat, right? The um, um, optimal solution. And then we can use Miyasawa to um, get access, get easy access to the gradient of the log of the blurred prior. Okay. Um, so here, in order to get x hat, I'm going to train a deep neural network uh, by minimizing mean square error um, uh, between the clean images and, um, and the output of this denoiser. And then we can just subtract the input from the output after the training is completed um, and get access to, the, to this modulated gradient term that we were interested in. Um, so more specifically, uh, this is the architecture that I'm using here. It has 20 layers of convolutions and ReLUs. And importantly, it's blind and universal, meaning that during training, we sample a sound deviation of the Gaussian noise from a uniform distribution in a continuous way. And then we add um, uh, samples of noise to the input. So this denoiser uh, is able, at the end, is able to remove noise with different standard deviations. So that means that it has um, an infinite continuous family of uh, gradients of uh, different priors embedded in it. Right? And um, uh, also, it is blind, meaning that you don't need to tell it what's the standard deviation of the noise. It can just estimate that uh, from the image. Okay? So now we have all the ingredients to perform our anti-diffusion process. We have access to all of these gradients with different, different levels of blur. Okay, so um, back to my illustration. I start from a noisy, uh, basically a um, noise sample. So here we can assume that uh, the Gaussian is, has such a big variance that uh, every, like image is completely buried under this. Um, and then we feed this uh, to our denoiser in order to uh, move towards the manifold um, and get the gradient from the denoiser. And um, we take a fraction of the step, um, which uh, is determined by a hyperparameter, h, it's a fixed value. And then uh, we keep um, basically repeating. So now uh, the output of the denoiser uh, can be thought of as, as a sample from a probability distribution, which is a little bit less blurred. Right? So um, then we uh, need the gradient for that di distribution. And so we then keep uh, basically iterating, um, uh, computing the gradient in each step uh, and get closer to the manifold until we land on it. So gradually, the content of the image emerges from the, um, um, the, the structure emerges under, from underneath the noise. And, um, okay, so I have a simulation um, of what I just showed you. Um, so uh, what, is, um, uh, what makes the, this algorithm robust is that the step size is estimated by the denoiser itself. It's automatic. We, need, we don't need to set the step size. It knows because it can estimate sigma, and this sigma squared term is in front of the gradient. It, it knows what's the right magnitude for the step. Okay. All right. And here is the compilation of all of these trajectories, as you saw. Okay. So um, this is the, the algorithm that I just talked about. Uh, as you can see, there is only three hyperparameters. There is um, just a question. But maybe you're gonna you're gonna answer it soon. Uh, uh, do you have some guarantee that you will end up on the prior by uh, using this step? Yeah. Or? Uh, so a very good question. Uh, we don't have a guarantee. Basically, the stopping criteria is when the sigma or the noise is small enough. Um, so we set a threshold, uh, and that's when the convergence happens. So we have empirical result that shows convergence, uh, which is very robust, but we don't have guarantees for convergence. Okay. Um, 
if, if you don't mind. Um, no, 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 so, um, how, how do we pick the, the threshold um, hmm. on, the, on the noise? Right. To stop so, the um, we kind of choose it uh, arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. We basically choose it um, in a qualitative way. Okay. Um, for example, here, if images are between 0 and 1, I set it to 0.01. And that's where you really cannot distinguish between a clean image and a noisy image. Um, so that's how we set the threshold. Okay. All right. So there's some some notion of this is the precision that I want to achieve, yeah. and then you can uh, yes come up with the yeah. corresponding convergence. Criteria. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so. This is a, 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 an example of a 40 by 40 patch. The denoiser was trained on patches of images. Uh, and then we start with a patch of noise. And I'm showing some of the steps in the trajectory in two rows, so the, the, uh, two different initializations. And at the end, you can see that basically this is, this is an indication of what this denoiser think is a good prior of images. We can see that there are like flat areas, edges, and this basically comes from the the training procedure. Um, uh, so here, the entire, as you can see, when you start from two different samples of noise, you land on two different um, uh, examples, point on the manifold. And that's because um, this is not a unimodal. We know that it's not a unimodal distribution. So we ended up, end up in different points. Uh, but that's the only place where we have a stochasticity uh, is basically the initialization. So if we want to make this procedure uh, more stochastic and basically give the, the trajectory the freedom to explore this, the space, uh, we can add a random step after each gradient directed step. Um, and that's what I'm doing here. The important thing is that we want the, um, the variance of this added step, this uh, random step, uh, to be small enough such that the overall variance after taking one step goes down with respect to the previous step. And that's how we uh, set up the algorithm to guarantee that. And as you can see, the trajectories become more uh, wiggly and the convergence is delayed. So I'm showing three different uh, uh, samples with three different uh, uh, levels of injected noise. So injected noise in the algorithm is controlled by beta. Uh, and smaller beta means more injected noise. And as you can see, the, um, it takes more time to um, uh, converge. But regardless, we have uh, robust convergence. And that's uh, some uh, experimental result uh, to show that, that we have these two hyperparameters, h and beta. And with different combination of these, we show that um, we achieve convergence. Um, OK, so the second um, uh, enhancement to the uh, algorithm is basically going back to, the, <laughs> to what we started in the beginning, solving inverse problems. Uh, so, so far, we have talked about sampling from this manifold freely without any constraints. Uh, but now, uh, our goal is to sample from this conditional distribution. So we have a deterministic measurement, which is low rank, some examples I showed in the beginning. Uh, and now the goal is to sample from probability uh, of y and eventually x given this constraint. Geometrically, this is equivalent to uh, Com uh, basically converging to the points on the uh, intersection of this curved manifold and um, the uh, uh, subspace spanned by the column space of M. Right? Um, so in order to achieve this, we basically, the only change that we make in the algorithm is to partition the gradient into uh, two, uh, to perform in two uh, orthogonal subspaces. Uh, uh, we have the gradient that comes from the um, measurement space. Uh, and then we, um, the part of the gradient that we don't have, we get from the prior. Uh, because these two gradients are operating in two different spaces, which are not overlapping, uh, this um, is, again, very robust in terms of convergence, because they don't interfere with each other. So 
Here, um, I'm going to show you uh, a few different examples uh, of applying this algorithm. Um, so in all of these cases, all the hyperparameters are the same. So basically, beta and h are the same. And uh, we tell the algorithm what is the forward measurement model. Um, and then we let it run. Uh, so in the first, um, and this is like an in-painting example, in the first column, uh, we have clean images. In the second column, uh, we have the partial measurement, right? So uh, uh, there is a missing part in the image, which we want to retrieve. And um, the algorithm returns. So we, we run the algorithm three times to show that it's a stochastic. In each run, it gives us back um, an image which is consistent with the uh, uh, measurement, but um, also uh, recovered the missing parts. Um, the next example is when we have like about here, we have like 90% of the pixels are missing. Uh, and then we use the algorithm in order to recover um, the 90%. Um, and here are the results. So the algorithm never sees the um, first row. Um, uh, yeah, so there is no more training involved. Next, we have. Uh, uh, basically uh, super resolution. I'm zooming in here into the image to show the differences. Um, our algorithm is um, uh, giving us um, really sharp edges, uh, which means that these are coming from a good prior. Um, and if you, because the, uh, this is not uh, when you apply this denoiser iteratively, it doesn't basically optimize mean square error. If you compare the mean square error or uh, PSNR um, with different methods, our method is uh, performing a little bit lower than other methods. But uh, if you basically average across multiple runs, then that improves PSNR uh, or MSE, which I'm showing here. Um, uh, deep learning is another example. Again, we see um, really good performance based on this uh, really good uh, prior that is embedded in this denoiser. Um, and also performance uh, on compressive sensing. Um, is there a, a question there? Yeah. So how does this averaging work? You showed like that filling in of the digits where there was like a seven and a four and a nine. Like yeah. what would happen in this situation for something like that? Does oh. it... Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, I think um, that is probably, uh, that probably is related to the continuity of the embedded uh, uh, prior. Uh, when we have like a more continuous uh, prior when this denoiser, which happens when you're training on patches of um, images, um, what you have, what you are averaging on is basically a curved area of this uh, prior. Uh, so you end up uh, on a point which is like not on the manifold, but is not that far from each one of them. Um, and also, it's also closer to the mean square estimation. Uh, but when you have, like, when you are training on the, like, um, discrete categories, um, when you are sampling, you are, you are basically sampling from um, um, different manifolds. Uh, so the average is going to be somewhere, somewhere in between, but um, it's not really one digit. Because it doesn't... So these images, if you looked at original minus restored, mm -hmm. restored. Right. What does that look like? What, what is what is it mm. missing? Um, right. So, um, oh, I see. You are saying like, what's the error um, here? Um, well, it depends here. Um, I mean, that is quantified with um, PSNR or MSE. In like, for example, here. That's what MSE quantifies for us. Um, right. You mean, but MSE quantifies it on a pixel by pixel level? Yeah. Right. So I'm wondering more about the structure of the error. Mm. Right, you know, right. Is, I see. I mean, is that, I mean, 
MSC captures all the information if the error has a power spectrum that's completely white. Right. right. But is, you know, mm, uh, just see. trying to understand what's in the prior in terms of the, stru mm. the yeah. structure of the error. Yeah. And yeah, it's, that's it's, a... It, that's you know, a, 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 its power spectrum would be, or correlation function would be interesting right. to see. Right. Ooh. Right. Um, I think, like, for example, one example that w was just came up um, um, is um, about, like, um, locality and how global um, the uh, prior is. Um, yeah, but I, I think, yeah, I'm not sure how to answer that. Well, we can talk about it later. Yeah, I think it's something you could measure. Mm. Take the power spectrum, but also, and also the, the correlation between the error and the intrinsic energy. You know, what, what in the error, the image, mm -hmm. um, it, it's not restored. Right, right, I see. Yeah, so for example, what one answer, which is, I think, very relevant in many applications, is that if, for example, here, our denoisers are trained on uh, like images which have like global structure, um, and uh, they have global structure, but they are trained, the denoiser is trained on, on patches of those, and the receptive field of the denoiser is small with, compared to the global structure of the image, right? So that is not stored in the prior, like the global structure is not stored in the prior. Whereas like, for example, the MNIST example, the dig digit example, in that case, uh, because the receptive field of the denoiser is larger than the, the global image, the, the global structure of the image is stored in the prior. Um, yeah, so that's like one example of I'm just going to insert something that Zara's uh, not, not uh, remembering to tell you, which I think is important here. Um, we know a fair amount about the geometry of this thing. And when you analyze the geometry around image points, uh, you can find, you see that the denoiser is effectively doing something like a projection onto a low dimensional space. Mm -hmm. And that the axes of that space uh, include, or the, the, let's say, vectors lying within that space include De local deformations. So one of the things that will go wrong when you go to reconstruct is that features will show up in slightly the wrong place or slightly rotated, slightly perturbed, but in ways that are fairly natural. They look reasonable. So that's going to cost you in terms of mean squared error, but it's going to look pretty good. So you, you know, when, what we're really doing here in these reconstructions is drawing samples from the posterior, at least that's how we like to think of it. And um, when you average over a bunch of those samples, you're getting something that's more like the mean or the, the mean of the posterior, which will be better in terms of mean squared error, but will typically look worse. So, um, so maybe following, following that, so the averaging gives you an, uh, an expectation value with respect mm -hmm. to the posterior measure. Um, is there some utility to uh, computing a posterior variance to you know mm. quantifying the uncertainty and, mm. and trying to understand well from this partial information because the previous slide blows my mind mm -hmm. you know I'm which like, one the, the one where uh, I think it's the previous one yeah yeah this oh, one right that uh, you can reconstruct a fruit yeah. <laughs> salad yeah. based on I mean maybe there's more information in that than 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 uh, than I realize, um, but it also seems that right there should be some notion of uncertainty, right? right. right? And, and maybe sometimes there should be. Like, there is. Um, this is basically that's the that's the reason I think the reason that it can give you really good samples uh -huh. is that uh, it doesn't aim to give give a sample that is very close to the original image because then. Um, that is most likely un is not on the on the manifold if it's curved. Um, so every time we run it, we land on a different point right, on right. the on this mani on this curved manifold unless like it's linear, which is never the case. Uh, so um, because of that, the quality of these images are really is really high uh, because I see. they are 
true images. They're all like, basically, they're learned through the training process. They're learned from training examples and variations of them, um, which are there because of inductive, inductive right. biases it, it, it of the architecture. The, the, the prior that enforces that these look realistic. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah so, the, so the error in terms of MSC or PSNR is not small, but they look good. Um, okay, so um, we have more examples. This is another example where, like, I think I have, I'm, run, I'm out of time. Um, so uh, in all of these cases that I showed you, the measurement is deterministic, um, but we, like, generalize the algorithm to work on noisy low-rank uh, measurements. Um, and also here is one nonlinear example uh, where we try to deblock or remove the like the blocking artifacts that come from binarizing um, images or um, storing them in JPEG format. Um, which, like uh, very briefly, it uses the prior to take the right step, um, but then also respects the fact that like the values should be in a um, convex set uh, or in different beams. So that's the constraint here. Um, all right, so this was a description of uh, diffusion models where, which um, is a little different from the, the more uh, known, well-known uh, description. It's uh, very simple in terms of derivation. The derivation is just uh, the Miyasawa uh, formulation. Um, it's very robust and fast in convert convergence because the uh, step sizes are uh, determined by the denoiser. There are, we don't need to have like an external schedule for uh, step size. Um, yeah, and it's, I think it's, uh, the derivation is kind of intuitive. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, one quick question, very quick. Okay, Bruno. Thank you for uh, the very nice uh, presentation. Uh, so I, I'm just trying to make the connection here with diffusion models, and, and uh, I have the impression that uh, fundamentally you use the score function of the target distribution all the time. Yeah. Uh, and while well, in diffusion models, uh, you also use the score function of the target distribution convolved by some Gaussian distribution, uh, and yeah. So, are, are you thinking about trying to merge uh, these two mm. uh, ideas at some point, or, or like, uh, do you think it would help uh, yeah. to improve your results in some way? Or mm. right, I think uh, the main improvement in, in results come from using really large architectures, uh, which is like very common in uh, standard diffusion models. Um, uh, I think the sampling procedure that we have is based on fewer assumptions. Um, um, for example, we don't assume detailed balance or reversibility of the diffusion process, which is um, problematic in the case of images, I think. Um, and also, we don't have to deal with like choosing uh, step sizes because I think that's like a big topic in diffusion models where like it takes a long time to converge and you have to choose a good schedule for convergence. But you're right, the core idea is the same. We are using a score, we are blurring a distribution. And um, yeah, but, but yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, we, we um, wrote this algorithm inspired, it was inspired by um, a paper, score-based generative model paper by Ehrman and Song, um, and some P PNP or plug and play methods in signal processing. Um, so this was like a little before diffusion models, so we didn't call it diffusion models. Thanks. <laughs>